first, I'm so fat, blind people see me. <laughs> Maybe it's time to join a gym, finally. Who am I kidding? I'd rather fuck a gym. <laughs> In 1967, Marvin Gaye recorded a song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I think Kobe Bryant would disagree. <laughs> I want your vote, people. Speaking of guys with DNA spread out everywhere, Nick Cannon. <laughs> The dude's got a new job, and with 12 kids, he needs as many as he can get. He was named the new Secretary of Agriculture for his ability to spread a seed across the U.S. <laughs> and you'd never believe it, but he actually has something in common with Vladimir Putin. They don't fucking pull out. <laughs> Speaking of dogs. You know, they say a dog is a man's best friend. Fuck that. I've never had to take my friend for a walk and then pick up his shit. <laughs> and thinking about it, they both like to hunt my wife. <laughs> Speaking of dog shit, Mac Jones. <laughs> Speaking of regret. In the spring, I had my yearly physical. Doctor walks in the office and says, do you mind having a student doctor with you? I'm like, everyone's gotta learn. In walks, five foot six, long black hair, a beauty. Her name was Heather. I don't really fucking know her name. It could have been Gail, but nobody wants to fuck a Gail. They want to fuck a Heather, so that's her goddamn name. <laughs> but then it hit me. This is going to be a woman grabbing my balls and asking me to cough. I'm like, that's not good. Well, it is, but... But at that same point, the doctor decides, I think it's a good time to take your blood pressure. It was high. The physical was going well until the end. Guys, we all know what the end is. The prostate. <laughs> now, I thought I lucked out because luckily, Heather had small hands and a very gentle touch. But then this voice came over like, God, I'm next. Like I'm a fucking video game called the Anal Excavator. My doctor fucking jammed me so hard it was like a crocodile killing a deer. <laughs> and he was in there so long. It was like he was looking for keys in the dark, in a drawer. <laughs> so then he finally gets out and he's like, I'll call you with the results. I'll call you with the results? You can't even give me a fist bump? Or a handshake? Not that I want to shake the hand. <laughs> I know I'm not getting sympathy from you women. I mean, you guys have been poked, prodded, squished, fondled, and that's only at work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the prostate exam didn't make me think about my wife. And we just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. We were friends for a while, and that friend zone fucking sucks. The friend zone, and I'm here with a bunch of comics, so I'm sure you all know the friend zone. <laughs> you know the friend zone, you don't know the G-spot. It's like, where the fuck Waldo is? I still don't know that either. But the friend zone is like, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, and they put a nice, beautiful taco in front of you. But you're not good enough to have that taco. Every other guy, as long as it's not an open mic, can have that taco. And maybe even some women can have that taco. But not you. You're good enough, though, to take her for a walk, to go shopping with her, 
to be the plus one at the fucking weddings and family events. Oh yeah, you're good enough for that. And then you can curl up on the couch and watch all these Hallmark Christmas movies more than you ever knew. And ironically, they all have a happy ending, which you're never getting from her. But once I tried to, once, the first time, excuse me, I tried to break down the friend zone wall, it was June 17th, 1994. Okay, big date in your life. <laughs> I rented a house, I, okay, I rented a room on 